What if everything you've been taught about a black hole is wrong? Keystone School of Advanced Studies presents How Black Holes Really Work, a Maverick Theory. A black hole is like a gigantic whirlpool whose colossal gravity sucks in everything in its path. The area outside the event horizon is called the accretion disk. It's an insanely hot cosmic cauldron where entire galaxies are torn apart into their tiniest building blocks, bosons and fermions. Although the area outside the black hole is insanely hot, inside it is extremely cold, a temperature at or near absolute zero. And matter that enters a black hole is condensed into a zero entropy superfluid and collapses down the dimensions from 4 dimension to 3, 3 dimension to 2, 2 dimension to 1, all the way down to the zero point. Superfluids are unique in that they can exist in all four dimensions as they undergo a phase transition which transforms superfluid helium-4 into ever more exotic states of matter which produces an ever more powerful cooling effect until a temperature of absolute zero is reached. The very essence of entropy is heat. Absolute zero temperature equals absolute zero entropy equals absolute zero wavelength. The very essence of entropy is heat. At absolute zero temperature, we have absolute zero entropy. At the very center of a black hole, we find the zero point. Absolute zero temperature, absolute zero entropy, and absolute zero wavelength. Superfluid helium-4 is the only known substance that remains liquid at absolute zero. All matter in the universe is either a boson or fermion. Bosons have a full spin, whereas fermions have a half spin. Bosons such as light have zero charge, whereas fermions such as positrons and electrons have either positive or negative charge. A boson is capable of infinite compression. An infinitely large number of bosons can be compressed into an infinitely small space where they act as one unit. Enough bosons to create a million, a billion or even a trillion galaxies can fit inside a grain of sand. This is because bosons are not subject to the Pauli exclusion principle, while fermions are. Because fermions are subject to the Pauli exclusion principle, they are not capable of infinite compression on their own. However, fermions can achieve infinite compression when it combines with other fermions to create bosons. And this is exactly what happens at a black hole. Particles are sucked into a black hole where the gigantic gravity forces them together to form bosons which in turn forms a superfluid battery capable of infinite compression. Since there is no limit as to how many bosons can occupy the same quantum state, a virtually infinite amount of energy, information and mass can be stored inside a black hole. This superfluid storehouse holds a truly awesome amount of information, matter and energy. Everything that has ever entered the black hole for billions of years is stored here. Bosons that enter the black hole are condensed into a superfluid. Fermions that enter a black hole are also condensed into a superfluid after they first combine with other fermions to create bosons. The transformation of fermions into bosons happens in three main ways. 
The first is when a positive and a negative fermion collide to create a photon of light. A photon is an elemental boson that has zero mass and zero charge. Here two fermions, a positron and an electron, which have gravity, are transformed into radiation. The opposite also occurs in nature. A photon of light radiation transforms into a pair of positive and negative particles which both have gravity. The transformation of radiation into gravity and gravity into radiation is an everyday occurrence in nature. This is called pair production and particle annihilation respectively. Pair production is when, for example, a photon of light transforms into a positive and a negatively charged particle. Annihilation is when a positive and negatively charged particle combine to create light. The same transformation occurs in a black hole. The second example is when fermions combine to form composite bosons. In this example, six fermions, two positive, two neutral, two negative, combine to form helium-4, which is a composite boson which has zero charge but some mass. The bulk of mass inside a black hole is superfluid helium-4, which is capable of infinite compression. So put simply, a composite boson is made from fermions that are in perfect balance. So for example, helium-4 is essentially three different sets of Cooper pairs. One set positive, one set neutral, one set negative. The third way for fermions to become bosons is when a pair of either positive or negative fermions interact with sound phonons and combine to form a Cooper pair which is a composite boson which has both charge and mass. So for example, two electrons, each with a half unit of spin, combine into a Cooper pair which has negative charge. Since negative Cooper pairs are bosons, they are capable of infinite compression and therefore all the negative charged particles that enters a black hole can be compressed into the same quantum state. One negative Cooper pair which acts as one unit and can be represented mathematically as minus one. Similarly, two positrons, each with a half unit of spin, can be combined into a positively charged Cooper pair. And since positive Cooper pairs are bosons and also capable of infinite compression, and therefore all positively charged particles that enters a black hole can be compressed into the same quantum state. One positive Cooper pair which acts as one unit and can be represented mathematically as plus one. Nature's supreme law is the synergy of opposites. Everything has its opposite. Positive and negative. Expansion and contraction. Entropy and syntropy, radiation and gravity. Nature's synergy of opposites can be represented mathematically as zero divided by zero equals plus and minus one. This elegant formula has profound implications for our mathematical and philosophical understanding of how nature weaves her magic because it shows how we go from nothing to something. Elemental bosons such as light photons and composite bosons such as helium-4 and Cooper pairs inside a black hole condense into a superfluid which can spin forever. And since composite bosons like helium-4 and Cooper pairs have mass, this creates an incredibly strong gravitational field. As the more composite bosons are compressed, the stronger the black hole's gravity becomes.
a black hole is a place of maximum gravity and we are about to show how that gravity is overcome not only do entire galaxies spin around black holes entire collapsed galaxies and all of their information are stored inside black holes for future recycling the boson superfluid inside black holes collapses down the dimensions from four to three three dimension to two two dimension to one all the way down to the zero point this superfluid storehouse can store an infinite amount of information energy and matter for future recycling While light and composite bosons are stored in the superfluid storehouse, only sound phonons can reach the zero point, and when they do, they no longer have a medium to propagate and cannot survive. As a result, phonons which have gravity collapse to zero wavelength and are transformed into zero wavelength light via a process called sonoluminescence, which also releases heat. Sonoluminescence is the transformation of sound into light, of gravity into radiation. This liquid light streams from the zero point and recharges the superfluid storehouse like a battery, building a colossal store of previously unaccounted for energy. Over eons of time, the sonoluminescence increases the temperature of the superfluid, which increases entropy, and eventually a tipping point is reached when the infinitely compressed superfluid overheats, causing a decay from bosons into fermions, which are not capable of infinite compression, because they are subject to the Pauli exclusion principle. As a result, this causes an enormous and rapid expansion and releases huge stores of energy from within the black hole via gigantic astrophysical jets. These jets shoot out recycled information, energy and matter all across the cosmos as the black hole seeks to return to absolute zero equilibrium. Despite popular opinion, an astrophysical jet is not formed from the accretion disk outside a black hole, it's formed from within. Just because an opinion is popular doesn't mean it's accurate. And similarly, a black hole is not a one-way street. It is not an eternal prison from which not even light or information can escape. A more accurate description is that the black hole's inmates make a spectacular jailbreak every once in a while in the form of an astrophysical jet such as a quasar. The colossal amounts of information, energy and matter that enters the black hole are not lost. It's merely recycled as the black hole whirlpool temporarily becomes a fountain. This maverick theory restores both symmetry and common sense to our understanding of nature at the grandest of scales. It can also account for the so-called missing energy and dark matter in the universe via the infinite compression of bosons inside a black hole and can ultimately consign the Big Bang creation myth to the dustbin of history. The universe is not a Big Bang. It's a big brain.